What's going on Nasty Nation? It's Nasty and in today's video I'll be going over every single aspect of the champion Lux. This guide is going to include a rundown on her abilities, skill order, build paths, counter picks, combos, and many more things that'll help take your Lux to the next level. This guide will in fact be focused on Lux in the support role, but just about everything I mentioned in this video can also be applied to Lux in the mid lane as well. Before we get into the video, I would just like to leave a friendly reminder that I have also made guides for champions such as Rakan, Thresh, and Yumi, so feel free to check those out as well. Be sure to leave a like on the video if you do go on to enjoy and drop a comment down below letting me know what champion I should do a guide for next. Well that should just about wrap up this little introduction so without further ado let's get into the video. Now I'm not gonna lie I've played this game for six years and probably for the first five and a half years of playing this game I always looked at Lux as a champion that belonged in the mid lane I always looked at Lux and thought this champion is not a good support I don't understand why people are trying to force her to be a support However, these days Lux is one of my most played champions. She is a very successful support champion She's one of the strongest support champions at the time of making this video People are playing her in low elo mid elo and high elo and she's just having a ton of success The reason for that being is because she's just got a lot going for her she has one shot potential she has pick potential she has a strong early mid and late game and overall she has very high carry potential which is not something that you typically get out of a support champion or rather a traditional support champion overall she's just a solid support pick that is perfect for solo queue and she is a champion that i would highly recommend picking up and adding to your champion pool if you have not done so already let's start things off with the basics and let's discuss her abilities and her max order lux's passive is illumination after lux hits an enemy with an ability they will be illuminated and for a short period of time afterwards if she she auto attacks them she will do additional damage this really helps out Lux in the early game when she doesn't have enough damage to quite one shot enemies with her full combo and this is going to allow her to put out more damage as a whole as long as she is able to auto attack and layer those with her abilities Lux's Q is light binding using this ability will send a skill shot on a straight line rooting two enemies in place this is pretty much Lux's bread and butter as it sets up for pretty much any of her all-ins and all of her one-shots. Even though CC is typically what you want to max first in the support role, her poke is more important which I'll talk about in just a second and that's why you actually max this ability second and not first. Lux's W is Prismatic Barrier. Using this ability will send a shield out in a straight line and then returning to Lux almost like a boomerang. This ability will shield all allies hit on the way out and it will shield for an additional amount when it returns. Lux support does not have the best peel in the world but between her Q and her shield she is able to help heal a little bit. With that being said you want to max this ability last. Lux's E is Lucent Singularity. Using this ability once will create a circular slow on the ground and using it again will detonate it causing damage to any enemies within it. This is going to be Lux's main way of poking down the enemy in the lane phase and setting up for potential all-ins. It can also be a great way to set up for your Q considering the slow does make it easier for you to land other skill shots. You want to max this ability first. And finally Lux's ultimate is Final Spark. This is a fairly long-ranged ability that shoots a ray of light damaging all enemies in its path. This ability is most commonly used as a form of wave clear, as a way to execute enemies who are far away, or as a way to finish off a combo and pick up a kill. As it goes for pretty much any champion in the game, make sure you put a point in your ultimate whenever possible. Now for runes, there's actually a lot of different viable rune options for Lux, so hang in there while I try my best to cover all of them. To get things started, I'll first show off what I believe is the strongest rune page to take on Lux support. This rune page starts off in the Sorcery Tree with Comet, Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Scorch. On the right side of the page, I recommend Precision with Presence of mine in Coupe de Gras. And to finish things off, I would recommend two adaptive force runes and one armor. Some alternatives for this rune page include taking absolute focus instead of transcendence or taking gathering storm instead of scorch. Another alternative version to this rune page includes swapping out the precision tree for inspiration and taking biscuit delivery and cosmic insight. Another viable rune page that has only become popular as of recent starts in the resolve tree with aftershock. That'll be followed by font of life, bone plating, and revitalize. This time around in the secondary tree, the variations can either be mana flow and Scorch, Zombie Ward and Relentless Hunter, Presence of Mind and Coupe de Gras, or Biscuits and Cosmic Insight. Like I said earlier, she has a ton of viable options, and although I recommend the first page that I showed, any of these runes are viable, so feel free to mix and match and see which runes you like best. Next up, I want to talk about summoner spells. Now, whenever I typically do a guide, I don't talk about summoner spells too much because typically summoner spells are kind of a given. There's there's a couple summoner spells that you pretty much take on the champion every single time you play this champion. For example, every time you play Bard, you take Flash and Ignite. Every time you play Hecarim, you play with Ghost and Smite. But when it comes to Lux, I think a lot of people take the wrong summoner spells. And I think that personally, when it comes to playing Lux support, a lot of people like to take Ignite or Exhaust. The way I see it, if you're close enough to the enemy to the point that you can use 
use either exhaust or ignite then you are way too close to the enemy that means you are not positioning correctly so personally i would recommend taking barrier with flash i know this is kind of a little bit weird for support to take barrier however again if you're close enough to use either ignite or exhaust you are too close this is going to allow you to position a little bit better and stay alive a little bit more often and that's why i'd recommend a barrier and flash on luck support when it comes to the build path for luck support it is going to be pretty much the exact same as you would see in the mid lane the starting item is of course going to be different instead of taking Doran's ring you're going to want to take spell thieves and upgrade that to frost fang following that you're going to want to take sorcerer's boots and luden's echo in pretty much every single game situation after that i would recommend morella nomicon hourglass and void staff to top things off because you are playing Lux in the support role and not mid, chances are you won't actually get to finish more than 4 items, but it would ideally look like this if you ever got deep into a game. Sometimes I will opt to swap the order in which I buy Zonias and Ludens if I am in dire need of armor and survivability, but for the most part I don't stray too much away from this core build. Next up let's talk about matchups and when you should look to pick Lux. Very simply put, Lux is good into tanks and bad into sustained supports. This is mainly because she outranges tank champions because tank champions are melee and she's ranged, so she can poke them down, whittle them down before they ever get the chance to do anything in the lane phase. And when it comes to sustained supports, the reason she loses these matchups is because they can simply out sustain and out heal the poke that she's able to put out, and therefore she becomes kind of useless. With all that being said though, it gets a little tricky here because tanks can have the upper hand if they manage to all in Lux, and Lux can have the upper hand against sustained supports if she can manage to all in them. So again, it can get a a bit complicated under certain circumstances, but those are in fact how the matchups typically work. Moving on now, let's talk about Lux's combos. So Lux only really has two main combos that you do need to keep in mind. The first combo is a layered QER combo. You can execute this combo by using Q and E simultaneously, autoing once, ulting, pressing E again to detonate it, and finally autoing once more. This combo is best used when you don't quite have enough damage to one-shot your enemy, so instead you need to utilize your passive damage as much as possible. If you are in fact strong enough to the point that you can just straight up one-shot your enemy though, then you would use a more standard and simpler combo, which is nothing more than a QER combo. Let's move on again, and now let's talk about more of the gameplay aspect of Lux, and let's talk about the early game and the lane phase. So when it comes to the lane phase, your main focus is going to be poking down the enemy with your E and your auto attacks as much as possible. At the same time though, don't force using your passive and using your auto attacks too much. I know a lot of times it could be tempting to walk up and auto attack and proc that, but if you do that too often, you are going to put yourself in a dangerous situation. So try to just E auto and if it's not available, if you are too far away to follow up the E with an auto attack, just leave it be. Also make sure that you are saving your Q for all ins or potential ganks or for peeling. Don't use your Q for the sake of poking down your enemy. There really isn't all that much to the lane phase. It's pretty much a rinse and repeat process of just that. But Focus on poking down the enemy with your E and autos when you can, don't be too greedy or else you'll take losing trades too often, and save your Q for certain situations. As the lane phase progresses, you might see yourself with opportunities to roam. When it comes to roaming as Lux, you can roam by leading with your E for a slow and then potentially hitting a Q after that, but for the most part, roaming is not super efficient as I just mentioned. That is a very difficult gank to pull off, so if you do see the opportunity, if you have nothing else to do on the map, then you can go for a gank and try to pull off something like that, but for the most part, when it comes to lane dominant support, like Lux, you do want to be spending as much time as you possibly can in the lane phase because you are a strong laner, you want to stay in the bot lane and try to push your lead as much as possible. As for the late game, this is where I think Lux excels the most. Even though she is a strong laner, she's strong early, mid, and late game. Late game is where I think she kind of stands out the most. When it comes to late game and team fighting, this is what you want to focus on. First off, make sure that you are just focusing on the frontline targets. Even though you have a lot of damage, it's not your job to dive the backline and try to one-shot enemies. You can, while you're roaming around the map, look for potential picks by leading with your Q and one-shotting there. That way you do have the opportunity to pick off these carry champions, but when it comes to team fighting as a whole, focus on the frontline targets to don't dive too far back or else you will misposition and die. Also make sure that you're applying your W to as many teams as possible and make sure you're watching out for when the W comes back because the shield is enhanced. Try as best as you can to look to mix in your auto attacks in between your abilities specifically on those frontline targets. You will have the opportunity to do so when they're right in your face. And most importantly, just try to find as many picks as you possibly can because you do excel at poking in the early game and picking in the late game. You might have noticed that team fighting as Lux support is pretty much straightforward and pretty much the exact same playstyle as mid lane Lux. So again, this is something that can be applied to both lanes. All right then, ladies and gentlemen, well, that is going to wrap up this Lux champion guide. I hope you guys were able to find this video helpful or enjoyable. If you were, then once again, be sure to leave a like on the video, comment down below, and make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you have not done so already. Anyways, I would just like to thank each and every one of you who did stick around to the end of the video thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys next time peace